Hi guys, I just wanted to go through the references on Word. Uh, I believe some people wanted to figure out how to um, get the referencing going on Word. Um, it's an interesting, it's interesting, but it works really well. So you'll find it in references. Um, you've got different styles here. Um, these are all standard. You probably will have to download the Harvard AGPS, and I'll show you how we can do that if you don't know already. Um, so this is my first assessment, um, and this is the references section on it. Um, we can also use it as a citation. So I can choose some of the um, references I've already in, in, uh, input in there uh, as citations at the end of a, a sentence or a paragraph. So to start with, we'll go back to Internet Explorer, and I'll show you how we can get to this section on the AIB website. Um, but there's two uh, there's two different instructions for one for Windows, one for Mac. Uh, I imagine Mac's going to be very similar to Windows. I'm only going to go through Windows at the moment because I don't have a Mac. Um, so to find this referencing mechanics, recording your research, um, it'll be in this list here when we are in Tools for Study. So if we go to Study Support, which will be on, I think, most screens, um, we want to go down to Tools for Study, and then we want to find uh, Referencing, and we'll find Referencing Mechanics under Referencing Software. Then we want to go on the right-hand side to Referencing in Word. Um, this all has also has a link to the LinkedIn Learning app. Oh, there you go. So LinkedIn Learning shows you how it works. Uh, you can probably just watch that instead of watching this, but totally up to you. Uh, anyway, um, I'm finding massive value in LinkedIn Learning, by the way. Um, anyway, so we want to close all Word documents. So I'll go ahead and just uh, save that and close it down. Um, and follow the instructions. Download Harvard AGPS. So it says right-click and save it onto your desktop. Don't open it. So I'll show you what happens when you open it. It comes up with gibberish. We just want to save the link as, and I've already saved it here, um, but we're going to save that. That'll just save for you onto your desktop, which is right there. We're going to go back, and you may also find it here. Um, uh, in File Explorer, open local, local disk. So your File Explorer is just your files. Um, and if in doubt, type in File Explorer. Uh, and we'll just follow these instructions. Open Users. Users you will find in your PC, Windows. And you want to go to Users under your Program Files. And it will ask you to go into your name or the PC name uh, of the users, I guess. Um, so there's a public and there'll be should be a, your user. So you want to go into your username. Um, now it says open app data. So even if I type in app, it's not going to let me open anything because it may be a hidden file. So to find it, you need to go to view up the top here and click on hidden items. And that will show up all of the hidden items that are uh, the hidden hidden files that were in here before. Uh, so app data, in my case, was a hidden file. So we want to click on app app data. Uh, it actually steps you through this too. Click on the view tab and then uncheck hidden items or check in this case hidden items. We want to open roaming. We want to open Microsoft. We want to open bibliography, which is up the top there. Open style. And now you want to just drag and drop the Harvard AGPS style sheet straight in here. I've already done it. So if I do it a second time, it's purely just going to ask me if I want to override it. But that's all you're going to do. Move. And in your case, it's just going to move straight in there. In my case, I'm going to skip so that it doesn't. Do it again. Um, now, if 
we go back, it'll say close out File Explorer and reopen Word. We're going to go Word. So we're just going to go directly into my first assessment um, and I will run you through uh, the references. So this is the references section up here. Once it loads, if we click on that, you'll see this main section here, citations and bibliography. So that's the bulk of what I use. So we can see that this is where we manage our sources. Um, this is everything here. Um, this is the styles. This is where you will find what we've just added to our Word documents, the Harvard AGPS uh, style. This is what we want to be using. Um, you'll see the difference when you choose a different style, um, but just make sure that it's always checked to Harvard whenever you open a new document because it may just automatically reset to APA. So if we set it to APA, you'll see it's just changed um, to a slightly different style. Um, this is the style that AIB want us to use, so we will just use it. So this is where, if we click on that, we can add new sources. We can edit any of these sources. Um, we can uh, delete any, and we can copy what is here on this list, this master list, is the list of uh, everything you've ever input into your Word documents. This list will be empty, current list, will be empty in a new Word document. Uh, and it will slowly fill up once you copy some uh, references over from previous references. Or if you want to add a new reference, we click new. So once we go in here, we can find the different type of reference it is, whether it's a book or a journal article, or whether it's a website. Uh, my recommendations, don't to use website, use a document from website. Uh, and there you'll be able to put the URL in when you accessed it, the year it was published, uh, and the name of the web page, author, etc. Uh, if you click on website, it gives you nothing from what I've seen. Uh, unless someone's got more information, that's all I can see. So book, or uh, in this case, I'm going to be inputting a journal article from, uh, you know what, I'll actually get rid of them because I just did this before. So if I go new, I'm going to find our author and our journal article. So to put an author in, you can't. You have to use edit, and this is where you can input several different names. With the Harvard style, you can put in as many names as you like, and I believe if you have four or more, it will automatically uh, use the initial author, and then in the references, it will have an L so that it doesn't mention every single name throughout history. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be inputting uh, George Grain and Mary Ulbian in regards to their LMX theory. Um, so I need to find these guys because that's just a reference list that I got from here. Oh, sorry, that's just, a, yeah, that is a reference list of particular articles I wanted to get in touch with from uh, another source that I found um, that seems to be quite um, useful. Uh, and they've got their references down here so that we can follow on from where they got their information from. Uh, so Grain and Albion did a lot of um, good research in regards to the LMX theory. Um, so I want to find this book so that I can get some more information because as you can see, it's given us the title and the article uh, or where the journal, what the journal is called but not any more information. So I want to copy that into, into uh, EBSCOhost, so, which is pretty much our library access. Um, so we're going to go down to log into EBSCOhost. And I need to do this through uh, ARB portal I've found because if I type in EBSCOhost, it doesn't give me anything on here. I, I think I can go to it, but I have to sign in. And Anyway, if I just go straight through the portal, straight off this, I can just come straight into this section and paste any information I want to look for. So we could either look for that or 
Uh, in this case, I'm just going to search for relationship-based approach to leadership. And fingers crossed we can find uh, that exact book that we're looking for, which was 1997, so that's nowhere near it. Uh, so I might even try and go with that auto fill. Um, so it doesn't look like EBSCOhost can find much for us, which is pretty typical. Um, but that's okay because we can just go straight into Google. And uh, if you look, if you see scholarly articles, that should take you straight to Google Scholar. Uh, and if you can see this section here, Google Scholar is awesome and it's typical for Google, very simple to use. If we go up into this little section here, you go settings. This is for the people who don't know this already. If you know this, great. Uh, but we want to go library links and make sure that we have found Australian Institute of Business full text AIB library. And we want to make sure that's checked. Uh, and that will give us all of our AIB library um, uh, articles as well, uh, anything that's available to us directly from AIB. Um, in this case, we found this relationship-based approach to leadership by George and Mary. So I'm going to click on that. I might go back so that I can leave this open. I'll right-click and go open a new tab so that I can refer to any others if this is quite the right one. But in this case, I know it is. Um, because I did it before. So 1995, I'm just going to start filling out some information here. Okay, let's start with the name. Pretty straightforward. George B. Grain. So we're going to start with Grain George B. Add. And I know the other author's name is Mary Ulbien. Add and click OK, and we're going to make sure that we've got that selected as the right um, uh, version of what it is. And in this case, it's not a book, it's not a website, it's a journal article. The title of the article is Relationship Based, Based Approach to Leadership, and that will do for the moment. Uh, journal name. I found down here was Leadership Quarterly Year was 1995 and pages 219 to 247. We can put the issue and the volume in if we would like, and I believe that might be volume 6, issue 2 potentially. Not 100% sure on that, but I'm going to put it in to be safe. So there it comes up here in our current list. So if you put a new one in, it automatically goes, well, you obviously need it for this. So it automatically books it in. If I've cited that particular source, it will have a tick next to it. And when I do that, when I come to doing my bibliography at the bottom, or sorry, my references at the bottom of the page, I can remove them and when I update citations oh, oh sorry not update when I click on this drop down list we can either add a bibliography which we won't do nor will we do references in this case with AIB they like to include references that have actually been cited in our work so we're going to click works cited uh, and so you can see that there's uh, all of the authors here that have been cited in the work so far um, We can also cite, so at the end of sentences, so if we uh, and we want to so cite that, we're going to go insert citation, and I'm going to go down to the re relevant citation. Uh, in this case, it was Nordhaus, and drop him in there. And then we can also edit that citation. We can edit the source, and that will take us back in here to edit anything that we need to, for example. Um, 
uh, we can also convert it to static text, so it just allows it to be added in uh, without the drop down. If we go Control Z, that'll bring it back to um, a non static. Um, and yeah, so that's as simple as that. If you add a new reference it, uh, or a citation in your thing and you've already put your bibliography, oh sorry, references in at the bottom here, it looks like it allows you to not just update it from here where it will automatically update a new reference that you've only just put in, for example, but it will also do it if you click on this as well. So say if I come down here and say, um, will be in uh, mentioned something I can then cite uh, grain and all will be in and then I can click on that and go update citations and it will show up down here if it's a new reference for example so really really handy I'm absolutely loving um, this work so I might even change that to references so that it can actually see references at the top there for for the satisfaction of our wonderful teachers um yeah good luck guys